Hi, <laughs> my name is Caitlin and um, I won $60,000 tonight. <laughs> um, I think, so I'm starting to vlog. I literally like want to quit poker. I cold called a three bet from Doug where they're friggin' pulled from the small blind. Look who made the final table, your protege. I'd like to see, oh, uh, she lays it down. Good game. I think that's everything, guys. I'm gonna be real, y'all. This vlog is gonna be real light on the hand histories. I can't even with the hand histories. After I graduated NYU drama, I moved to LA and was pursuing comedy. I was a student at the Groundlings for a time. I was invited to perform in a headlining show at the Women in Comedy Festival in Boston, where I performed with Sishira Zameda and Nicole Byer. That was a really cool credit I got. And I also visited almost 40 states with a burlesque troupe called Pinups on Tour. It was a free show for veterans and militaries to attend. And when I was living in LA, you know, you really had to hustle to get your three to six minutes on stage. But when I went on tour hosting the burlesque show, I was able to do like 45 minutes of material a night because I was the entire show between all the different musical uh, dance and song acts. So I really got my chops out on the road in a van. <laughs> Poker kind of happened on accident. When I was touring, it was something I did on the road to make a little extra cash. Uh, I didn't really even track my win rate very closely. I played in California and you know a little bar in Montana or Indiana, all over the country, the Harrows in St. Louis. And I never really took it seriously, it was just a hobby. When I moved to Texas, um, poker brought me back after a really hard and dark time. Uh, I've been playing professionally full-time for about, gosh, like 16 months now, 16, 17 months. Okay, so back to the action here. Matt is gonna put in the four bet here. It goes to 2.5X with ace, jack, off suit. This is a sizing where he can actually fold to a five bet jam from Caitlin, but does put her in a tough spot if she wants to play for all the chips. She has to make the next aggressive action. Wow. And yeah, getting a pretty good price, but would have to play out of position. It's really tough to be here with tens. It's one of those things where you just kind of close your eyes, flip a coin in, inside of your mind, and call, oh, sorry, raise or fold. Definitely don't want to be calling here too often, unless your plan is to always, always, always put your chips in after the flop. So, very stoic artist formerly known as Bust Like Matt. Ready to tango here as... And this is why these hands are always the most difficult here. They're just always put in a tough spot. Caitlin here going to make a call as... Yeah, so now she's got stack to pot ratio less than one. is about uh, three quarters. And so, I mean, so... Yeah, if it flops ace high, you can maybe convince yourself that you can get away from it. But I think here, yeah, she's just yeah. gonna have to shove it out, and this and is go, as exactly, yeah, the stop and go, which which is the other way to play this, right? Is like stop and go on anything that isn't ace high. This is also kind of a tricky board to do it on, but um, Matt now the one in the tricky spot. No, he's got to wonder what kind of hands would Kate, would Caitlin lead into Matt with a set? Would he lead? Would she lead in with? A hand like Ace Ten of Hearts, perhaps. So, like it, it's he's gonna make the call here, and he's got a, a slight advantage here. But some draws here for Caitlin, and is not gonna make it there on the first board, but still has some life here for the second. It is a three, and then a five. So, Matt gonna win it here with Ace Jack, because I you know I don't really have any fault with any way Caitlin played that. And I think. There are some players there that may... You know, I woke up feeling good the day of the tournament. You know, some days you just feel it. It's like that chapter in Harry Potter where he drinks the Lucky Potion and everything just goes his way. Like, some days you just wake up and you feel that. So, I did... I was feeling myself. I did my hair and makeup perfect. Just, you know, just in case I needed to look good for my winner's photo. Beautiful day for a six-figure score. I do say so myself. Beautiful day. Wish me luck. 
I grabbed all my lucky items. Um, I have lucky stone. <laughs> I'll take you through my lucky items later. But uh, I really had a good feeling about the day and I came in optimistic. The tournament featured in today's vlog is a monthly 500K guarantee at Lodge Poker Club in Round Rock, Texas. It was recently purchased by Doug Polk, Brad Owen, and Andrew Nimi, the absolute kings of YouTube poker content. The lodge is located 17 miles north of downtown Austin. It has over 80 tables. That's the largest in Texas, nay the nation. The staff is amazing. They have complimentary beverages, hot food, and the championship series is going on now through the end of May. Check their website for more details. If you can't already tell from this clip, Brad, Andrew, and Doug really care about the lodge customer base and spend a lot of time playing with us. The day before I bagged day one and three days before day two, I appeared on a live stream with all three of these guys and I did not do so hot, but you can watch the description below. I tried to bluff DQ. Please don't judge me. So the furthest I had ever made it in a multi-day tournament was level two of day two. So at this point, I've already, you know, set a personal best by making level three or four. This hand we're about to look at, when I got my table assignment from the beginning of the day, I recognized the name Jordan. We've played a lot together and we're friends on and off the felt, which is why I regret to inform you that I sucked out on him so hard. My ladies took out his cowboys. <laughs> Girl, that one. Really for one, two, five, yellow. So this happened right before the redraw. I'm sitting on about 15 big blinds. I open queen 10 suited from the hijack. The small blind just calls big blind folds. The flop is king of spades, four of clubs, deuce of spades. It's a pretty dry king high board. I have the range advantage. I go ahead and put in a two thirds pot size bet. My opponent just calls. Turn, peels off the seven of clubs. Almost instantaneously, my opponent leads out, forcing me all in. At this point, I have queen high and a club draw, but once I saw that club peel off, I had kind of already made up my mind that I was short stacked enough that I had to take this opportunity. So I went ahead and made the call, but the wildest thing was that it was the correct call with queen high. My opponent tables jack 10 of spades. I'm only fading spades and a jack. And uh, the river brings in the nine of clubs. I make my flush and we get the full double. Thanks to my girl, Kathy, for uh, finding the club for your girl. <laughs> Although Queen I was good. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Kathy. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Kathy. Uh, you're welcome. So <laughs> At the final two tables, we're on life support with under 10 big blinds. We're uh, engaging in a total open shove strategy. Uh, we're hoping we can steal the blinds in late positions with some suited kings or other hands of that class. Um, but we're, we're hanging on for dear life. At about 15 players left, we eliminate a player who shove, open shoves under the gun. Uh, we wake up in the big blind with ace queen offsuit. We're pretty short stacked. We barely cover this player, but we decide that this is the spot we want to take. We make the call on our opponent tables, king queen. We're absolutely dominating. Queen high board runs out and uh, the final table is within reach. After that hand, I have 15 big blinds, but I'm not getting a lot of spots. We're absolutely bleeding chips. I finally they announced that the 10th player has been eliminated. We're nine-handed. We made the final table. I do a happy dance. I am the only one that is visibly excited. Like at one point, Emmanuel McKenzie said to me like, that's so cute that you're excited because he's made like four final tables four months in a row. But you know, it was our first. Oh, hey, Andrew. Hey, Look who made the final table. So by making the final table, we've actually locked up our biggest cash ever. My biggest cash has been in a cash game for just under $8,000. So by locking up ninth place money at 9,400, even though we're the short stack with 10 big blinds, we've already locked up our biggest cash and we're ready to gamble. Sixes. Um, 
Oh, the sixes. Good My sixes. Bones is probably gonna win this pot. Oh, oh, oh I top smoke way too soon. That's cool alert. This is another set for Caitlin. So we'll see how Bones long. may check back here. Yeah. I, well, I, I doubt on this specific board there's ever gonna I think be a check back. Bones would need the the deck to uh, to breeze and blow off the table here for him to win this pot here. Uh, as a raise up here to six is. So Bones possessing the ten. Uh, which I think would be in a lot of Caitlyn's check raise is is actually pretty disastrous here for Casey because a lot of the hands she would choose to raise would be like nine ten suited and jack ten suited. And I guess some sets here, but it's also with a check here. I no, no probably your your th your your thing is probably right that it's once it slows down here with the ace of clubs. This still looks really strong though because she has to basically have a bluff that then decides to just purely give up to check turn check river but a lot of her flop check races that aren't bluffs are still going to be okay on this ace of clubs turn so bone's going to fire 1.1k in the case 10 out there on the flop and deuce of clubs here on the end so bones could potentially win since if he barrels at this barreling bones may turn his hand to a bluff here he has about 3,000 behind with uh, about 4K in the pot. The thing is, a club river, if he thinks that Caitlyn has a hand like pocket sixes, well, if she has pocket oh, threes or pocket shoves. tens, she, she can't have a club. And if she has pocket sixes with the six of clubs, it's going to be pretty tough to call here. And Bones knows that he has aces and Caitlyn doesn't. And... Bones may think that Caitlyn doesn't have enough, um, like, suited kings with the king of clubs. Uh-huh. So, this is not a, a typical line here, but it, it's one that she's going to give up the set. Bones, just see what really, really card Really good play show. from Bones here. He's going to show the 10. Yeah, so she knows. Well, actually, no. She, I was going to say she knows she can't. She could have won. But, okay. So once we're three-handed, that was actually the first time anybody brought up a chop. It was me. I said, do we want to talk, talk a chop? Uh, it was Manuel McKenzie, Nick, who ended up winning, and me. We said we could put 20K in the trophy on top and then do an ICM chop after that. We ran those numbers. We would all get between 59 and 65. It was actually Nick that um, made it. No, we voted anonymously, but Nick let us know that he didn't want to chop, and he refused. Uh, so we played three-handed. Emmanuel was eliminated next. Uh, good game, Emmanuel. And then it was heads up for 100K. We run the numbers. We both call um, our advisors and get some advice. At this point, my coach has, you know, been answering my message, asking me where the stacks were, telling me to just, you know, get, I mean, I was short stacks, so he's telling me to gamble. And then um, once it was heads up, Nick had a two to one chip lead on me, 30 million to my 15 million. We run the ICM numbers. I would have gotten 73 and he would have gotten 90. Um, ultimately, we both kind of decide that we don't want to take the chop. It was kind of mutual. I don't really know if I can take credit for that or that was more Nick's impetus, but we decide to play for it. So um, no offense to Nick, he's an absolutely wonderful player. He won that tournament fair and square. But um, once I got him heads up, I realized very quickly that I was the more experienced player heads up. I play heads up socially with my friend Colby, who is another really strong tournament player who's won a Lodge event. So I was immediately applying pressure, pushing the pace and making him uncomfortable. And I had taken the chip lead from like 15 million to 5 million. Nick asks if I want to chop at this point. And my, my sassy ass just looks him right in the eye and says no. And then finally, we get a hand where I open ace king of hearts, or no, excuse me, he limps, he just calls. And then I raise large um, with ace king of hearts, he calls. There's a 10 low, low flop. I put out a two thirds size bet, he calls. The turn uh, brings in the flush draw for me and a wheel draw. So a deuce gives me the wheel and a heart gives me the nuts. So, and then of course I also have my two overs. So I decide this is as good a spot as any. 
I think he'll fold one pair here. I shove all in. He does not even really think about it. He's not folding his one pair. He calls me with 10-6 offsuit. Deuce on the river gives us both a straight, but he has the six in his hand. Good game, Nick. <laughs> Chaz does what Chaz does, and he continues to bet. This is just kind of what what he does in these spots. Uh, continues to put the pressure, especially heads up, um, if he senses any kind of weakness. And he's thinking maybe maybe this barrel will shake shake those cards out of Caitlin's hands. But she's thinking. She's got that look. I wish she does have the king queen, huh? Quite possibly. Yeah. I like how we're getting shamed by a, a player in Germany. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not getting shamed, man. <laughs> yeah. I love Ace King. Okay. Uh, Kaylin's mystery hand is apparently strong, she's saying. So she's putting in a raise that's going to probably commit her the rest of the way if Big Daddy Chaz decides to keep going with it. Because he's not calling. Um, I think he's going to find a fold here with just the, uh, the open ender. I just want to know what Caitlin has. I know. Curious. Now, maybe a set of ducks, maybe a set of jacks. I think a set, let's put her on a set. I'll put her on a set of jacks. I think that's what she has. Am I right, Victoria? Is that a bingo? <laughs> Are we going to ever find out? Oh, Chaz puts in the call. All right. Oh, he goes over the top. No gamble, no future. Uh, Caitlin apparently doesn't have jack, so she's not snap calling. <laughs> oh, gosh. And Chaz is like, let's go. Chaz apparently says, if you have it, you have it, and puts the money in the middle. Chaz rarely says something like that in a hand, so... He's feeling loose tonight. You tell Caitlin's just tortured here. Oh, right. What did she get into? Oh, she has pocket fours? Okay. Um, what did you get into, girl? Yeah. Two red fours. Sailboats. Sailboats. The rampage. Yeah, those, those are... Those, those baby aces are not aces. Kitty cats and mill on the pile. Love those swinging balls. How'd y'all like those swinging balls? It's a good booty too, right? Olympic sport. What's y'all standard port here? It's not that like Utah bullshit where they only give you an ounce, right? <laughs> All right. So I was sitting around the other night. So can't believe it happened. I have to take off my makeup. I have to go to sleep soon. I am dog tired. We played for 14 hours. I'm just going to take off my makeup and I'm going to try to I know you're <laughs> I'm here watching the map game. A fun fact about me is that my favorite food is tortilla soup. A fun fact about this tortilla soup is that it is not good. <laughs> Should we try to order the steak and see how that is? I won $60,000 two days ago and I want to quit forever. <laughs> be okay and you're gonna be okay <laughs>